All right, chain rule. So everything up to this point is on first exam. Everything up to the point of trigonometry is first exam, guys. Relax about it. You have plenty of times. You will see it. You can ask me questions afterwards. It's not going to be a live exam. It's going to be a take-home exam because I don't want to waste any of our class time. And you can have uh, more than a week to complete it, which, of course, opens the possibility for cheating very, very much, of course, right? I don't see you. I give you a week or even longer than a week. It's very easy to cheat on this exam. But if you do, if you do, think about it there is the final there is also some trap questions that i will if i see you answer those questions i right away think well this person is either good or this person has uh, copied the solution and i will ask you in person okay relax you will know when the exam is due i haven't yet posted it clear relax you're suddenly asking me questions. Oh my God, when the exam is due? You see, oh my God, if this was a calculus question, how interested you are in it? Chain rule. Are you ready guys? Chain rule. That's a topic for the next exam. So we already know how to use quotient rule and product rule. So we have uh, derivative of X sine X equals to derivative of X times sine X plus X derivative of sine X. That's what we have here. Now, let's take a note of the type of functions that we are familiar with, okay? I used to work in the New York Aquarium, and so uh, I always think of fish. So we have polynomials, yes, guys? Polynomials is one type of function we are familiar with. We also have root functions, all sorts of radical functions. We have involution functions that's one over x type of functions we have trigonometric functions you see the medusa so that's the trigonometric functions and of course we have the exponential functions the previous uh, uh, category can be entirely enclosed within uh, rational functions so you see all previous four functions are uh, a subcategory of rational functions yes and exponential functions and trigonometric functions are somewhat different. So here is my question, right? Um, what have you witnessed here? So, so I'm asking you to calculate derivative of sine of x squared plus one. Before you calculate it, let's say you see sine of x squared plus one, what you have witnessed in terms of fish analogy. One moment, you think about it. Do you understand my question? I said that all the functions are like fish. And then you see sine of x squared plus one. What have you seen? Exactly, one person uh, has some imagination. That means that uh, a jellyfish is eating, well, it's not, the octopus was uh, the exponential. So it was eating a polynomial, right? A jellyfish ate a polynomial. That's what you're seeing. So then what you do to find the derivative is rather gruesome. What you do is, uh, here it is the, in the picture, right? So we have sine, the jellyfish, and you have the, uh, the one plus x squared, this poor polynomial. The jellyfish has eaten the polynomial. How do we find the derivative? I'll first show you the technique and then I'll explain why that works. I, I don't like doing that at all but whatever, right? So, uh, so what you do is this, you first, uh, like, like in, what is it? Uh, Little Red Riding Hood and the wolf. You first carve out the jellyfish and by carving out, you take the derivative. I call it fillet, right? You fillet the outer fish and you see X squared plus one on in its belly. So you just fillet the outer fish. Just derivative of sine is cosine. And then you multiply by the fillet of the inner fish, two X. You see, what you do is the derivative of outer function composed with the inner function intact multiplied by the derivative of the inner function. Now, what happened here, guys? The, we have a sine squared plus one 
what happened here. So in here, the jellyfish ate polynomial x squared plus one, what happened here? The reverse. The polynomial x squared plus one has eaten the jellyfish. And we want to find the derivative of that expression, yes? So then we can do that uh, very simply. We take the derivative of the outer function. The derivative of the outer function is the same as the derivative of x squared, you agree? So I just, I, it's basically this, I think box squared, and then you drop the two, all right? It's the derivative of box squared plus one, it's two box. Good, that was the derivative of the outer function multiplied by the derivative of inner function. The derivative of sine is cosine. So the answer is two sine cosine, which is by the way, if you recognize the formula, it's sine of two X. It's the double angle formula. Good, are you with me? Let's see if you are. Uh, please find uh, A. What's the derivative of E to the X squared? All right, good, a few of you have answered it. So first of all, we need to understand what happened here. Which function ate which other function? So now it's the octopus, exponential functions are octopus. It has eaten a polynomial, correct? So then the way I take the derivative is, yes, the way I take the derivative is, uh, that it's the derivative of the outer function. So it's e to the box because the derivative of e to the box is e to the box times box prime, or it's simply e x squared multiplied by two x, clear? Now, what about b? What's the derivative for b please? Okay, Kirill, All right, it, it, it's, it, it's just now the medusa and it has eaten uh, one of the, I forget what sort, what sort of fish, but the radical fish, right? So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So the derivative here is uh, secant squared root X times the derivative of root X. 
You see, well, I took the derivative of simply tangent and plug in uh, the, so it's, it's fillet of outer fish, inner fish inside, then multiply by the derivative of inner fish. So that's uh, secant squared root x, one over two root x. Yeah, good. What about the derivative of secant of one over x, please? Okay, Kirill, you're good, quick. The rest of you, derivative of secant of one over x. So, uh, Jonathan, you mean x to the minus two power times minus one. A chain rule is, um, is one fish inside of another. And when you take derivative, it's like you're a fisherman that that's opening up one fish and then, uh, pulls out the next fish and opening it up. Or if you are a vegetarian, imagine peeling onions. That's right, Christian. All right, so this is the situation for C. Let me actually show you here, I have uh, everything written out. Here is C guys, you see? So the derivative of secant, I just think of secant of a box. The derivative is secant box, tangent box times the derivative of what's inside of the box, and that's uh, minus one over x squared, clear? Then uh, the next one is uh, derivative of e to the cosecant x, what's that? That's very good, Kirill, you're quick.
Okay. So let's solve this now together. So very simply, the derivative of e to some power is e to some power, multiplied by the derivative of the power, which is in this case, minus cosecant x cotangent x, clear? Now let's look at why does the chain rule work? Here is what the chain rule is stating. So suppose I know f and g are differentiable functions. So f is differentiable at a and g is differentiable at f a. Okay, so in other words, uh, so, so then what's the derivative of the composition? Supposing that I know how to take the derivative of each individually, what's the derivative of composition when one ate the other? And uh, you can actually figure out a geometric way to do that. We can do that afterwards. And here is uh, by definition. You see this guys? So the derivative, I just label K to be the composition G with F. So the derivative of K at A is limit as X goes to A of KX minus KA over X minus A, which is uh, X going to A, G FX minus G F A over X minus A. Here is uh, my question. What should, uh, what do you want on the denominator? That's a very great question here. What would you have preferred on the denominator? Do you understand my question? Well, that's the question. What do I mean? If you know, then you see what you, you you have to have a goal. You have to have, you have to recognize something. Here is what I'm saying guys, right? So I begin taking the derivative of G of FX. Yes. By the definition, by one of those definitions, this is the same as limit where let's say Z goes to X of G F Z minus G F X. Yes, divided by Z minus X. Now, what would you have preferred to see here? This is the same question we just considered with the trig. What do you want to see on the denominator? And then it will be easily recognizable to you. Why two? There is no, uh, what's the special about two? Z minus X, uh, but that's what I see in the definition. Z minus X is the, defin is the derivative of the entire composition. But what do I want to see here? Let me maybe give you a small hint. It's hard to give you a hint without revealing this uh, question here. That's my hint.
So guys, no takers? Recognition, pattern recognition. What I, I write this thing, let me give you then another hint if you don't see it. What I see is that because F is differentiable, when Z goes to X, F of Z will go to F of X, you agree? Because differentiability implies continuity. F of Z will go to F of X. So we have G of something minus G of something else and that something goes to the something else. What do I want to see on the denominator? Again, you see, uh, I can put a box here box here. What do I want to see on the denominator? What, what would G help me in the denominator? I want to see what? Sometimes people answer it right. Uh, maybe, uh, Zainab, maybe, wonderful, but what, what specific thing? Oh, Muhammad and uh, Joshua. Okay, so some people are, are kind of there. Okay, what I want to see here is f of z minus f of x. Do you understand why? Guys, do you understand what I'm talking about? I recognize that if I see f of z minus f of x, that is the definition of the derivative of g at the point f of x. You understand? I have to have this uh, very good sense of uh, what is a derivative by definition. So then I multiply by the expression that I don't have and divide by x by z minus x. And what are you seeing here? You are seeing that, uh, that this is simply the first part in your thought bubble. It's exactly the same exercise. Do you realize exactly the same exercise that we were just uh, solving with concrete functions? This is G prime at the point F of X. Whereas this will approach F prime X. That's the chain rule. That's why it appears. You understand how you, if you understand this type of thinking, you can derive chain rule on your own. It's just a matter of recognition. What what is it that you want to see? Do you recognize what what does the derivative of g look like? And if you do, you you right away see you're training this. If you see g of something minus g of uh, something else, and the something goes to something else, you want to divide by the same thing. You understand because that is the definition of derivative. And let me give you that note again. Look at it, guys. If I have any function, right? If I have, let's say, uh, sine of um, something minus uh, sine of else, right? And I see that something goes to else are you are you following what i'm saying guys what do you divide by what do you want to see on the denominator i want comments something minus else very good so i want to see something minus else. And if I do, 
that's how you're guided by it. You understand? That's that's what makes you understand uh, that the derivative. And if I do, what do I get? If I if I take the limit, right? Something or something else, I take limit. Uh, so that will go to what? What's the answer? Sine of something minus sine of some of else divided by something minus else. Something goes to else. I didn't write something goes to else, but you understand that, right? What will be uh, the answer? The limit will be. I might, you see, so the way I will ask questions on the exam will be in this type of uh, format. I will have questions like this so that you will not be easily able to um, put it in the computer. Derivative, um, yes. Uh, come on, I want to see more people answering it. Come on, guys, what, what's going on here? Don't you recognize it? What's the answer? Give me the actual answer here. Well, why is it something times something else? No, no, you're missing a point, guys. You're not recognizing, uh, and you, you're kind of, you're, you're hovering around the recognition, but it's not there. No, why is it uh, sine uh, prime else times uh, else prime? No, look at it. It should be simpler. Guys, come on, you can do it. Sine of something minus sine else divided by something minus else. We agreed. Why did we put it there? Because what, what does this entire thing look like now? That's good. Derivative of what and where? Derivative of what function and at what point? Guys, it's why did I divide by something minus else? If you if you divided by something minus else, that means you recognize what is it that happens here. Something goes to else. You divided by something minus else. What is this going to approach? The derivative at else. Yes, Alexa. But derivative of what? So what's the actual answer here? Exactly, Muhammad, but so, so in particular, it is equal to your Muhammad are uh, the only person here that answered it um, pretty much absolutely correct, but I, wa I, want, I want this uh, exactly. Exactly, Christian. Yes, yes, but, 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 uh, but, but, uh, but really, but simpler, simpler. Why do you have to say cosine of something at else? Just say cosine else. The answer is cosine else come on guys what is all going on with you today not enough sleep you follow it's cosine of else that's that's how i i see it this way easily right so it's just a definition of derivative of sine at else 
was it clear? Did you understand? Because why? What is this? This is the derivative of uh, sine of whatever x, where x equals to else. That's really what happened here. This is the definition of the derivative where the point is else. You see guys, the fact that it takes you a long time to process it, it means you are not recognizing enough. Did you understand the explanation? Confirm in the comments, do you understand? All right. Let's let me uh, let me see. Uh, here is another example. Okay. Let me check uh, with one more example how well you understand. So, suppose that um, suppose that we know that the derivative at three equals to ten. Okay. I want you to tell me what is limit as h goes to zero of f of three plus sine h minus f of three divided by H, what's the answer? Why, why cosine? So what's the answer? So I will use questions like that to prevent you from uh, using the computer. Where did everyone go? We're playing peekaboo here. Cosine by itself, Joshua, is uh, it's just it's just a function. What do you mean cosine?
You surprise me. What? What is this? What is this? This is something. Yes? What is this? This is else. What do you want to see on the denominator? You want to see... So you see here F of of something. minus f of else. So what do you want it to be to be divided by? You want it to be divided by something minus else. And then multiply by here we had the h and here multiply by something minus else. Yes, that will be the denominator exactly, Alex. All right, so uh, what we have here is something minus else. We canceled it out. And we take, uh, and, and when they take limit as h goes to zero, something goes to something else. No, the answer is not one. Look at it, something. If h is going to zero, three plus sine h will go to three because sine h goes to zero. So this goes to else. This goes to else. So what do I do? I see. I simply see here that uh, this expression approaches the derivative at else, which is simply f prime of else is three. F prime of three, which is ten. As we said, the derivative at 3 is 10. And what is this? This is uh, sine of h, 3 plus that minus 3, divided by h. So that approaches simply 1, which you could have risen even, even faster because you, could, you see that limit as h goes to 0 of f of 3 plus sine h minus f of 3, divided by h. If h is very small, then sine h is essentially h. So that's the same thing as the limit where h goes to 0, f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 divided by h, which is f prime of 3, which was 10. Do you understand? I, I, you, we are solving always, continu continuously solving the same exact problem and you are not recognizing it somehow. What's so strange about it, right? Look, look at it, function inside of it, something goes to else. If we, if we see that, uh, and we, we also, we, we see, I could have played it this way. I could see that if h is small, then sine is not really doing anything. So it's really three plus h minus f of three over h. That's the definition of the derivative. And I told you the answer. Yes? Here is another question. So suppose that uh, I know that limit as x goes to one of kx is equal to three. And I know that uh, limit as x goes to three of fx is 10, good. And I know that uh, the derivative of f at three equals to minus seven, good. I'm interested to know what is limit 
as x goes to one of of f of kx minus 10 divided by x minus 1. Let's actually say divided by, so that we'll make it simpler, divided by kx minus three. What is that equal to? <laughs> okay, good. One person is able to reason, but about the rest. Okay, good, two people. Okay, more people finally noticed, minus seven, wonderful. It's very simple. This is, doesn't matter what X is doing, look at it. Limit 
as x goes to 1 f of kx, what is 10? 10 is um, when x goes to uh, 3, right? So that would be also when x goes to 1, k, uh, f of k of x. So that is f of k of 3. You see why? Because uh, k of 1, I'm sorry, f of k of 1. Because k of 1 will have to be 3 since uh, we have that limit. And uh, division is uh, kx minus 3, which is k of 1. So you see, again, we have something going to something else something going to something else. So that's the derivative of f at something else. So that's the derivative of f at three because k of one is three. You follow? Yes, guys? It's, it's all the same question. I mean, I, we asked the same question uh, three, four, five times. It's the same question recognize uh, what's happening here. Not the symbols, but what's happening here. All right, good. So there will be questions like this on the exam or something uh, of, that, of that nature so that you cannot just plug it into the computer. And uh, if you answer such questions, again, be aware that uh, it's very easy for me to find out if you understand. And if I find that you cannot, uh, if you answer those questions, got a hundred, Right, so stay under the radar, right? Maybe if you get 70, you don't know anything, I will not bother you. But if you are not coming to class, not participating, I know some people just uh, log in and don't, uh, don't, are not even attending, I will uh, uh, examine whether you know the material. And if I find you do not, I will um, annulate the grade. I will remove 30 points. All right, so I, have a, I hope I don't want to end on a threatening note. I'm just asking you, please, I'm asking you politely, I'm asking you friendly, and I will ask very unfriendly. Do not cheat on the exam when I give it. Uh, and understand the material, okay? So see you next time, have a great weekend. Stay happy, stay healthy. It's not gonna be easy anymore. Take care.